Hello everyone, I'm Tommy with StudioSense. I hope this video finds everyone doing excellent today. I'll even take well as an answer. Today's video is all about the top five designer fragrances that I've reached for most in this crazy and wonderful and strange 2020 so far. And what that basically means is what I reach for most to wear despite what I intend to wear, we're all kind of predisposed or have a predilection to pick those fragrances that make us feel good or of a type where we think they make us smell a specific way or present ourselves a specific way to somebody. And there's nothing wrong with that. We're all like that. So when we return, I'm going to go over my list of five fragrances that I've reached for most so far in 2020, that and more. So stay tuned. Hey guys, and welcome back. So that's right, I'm gonna go over my top five designer fragrances that I've reached for most in 2020 so far. Now this was kind of hard to do because as you well know on all of my social media platforms, and if you don't know, I'm telling you right now, I've got like Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, uh, Facebook, YouTube, all the basic, all the top five, I guess you could say. And I do a scent of the day. So tune into my scent of the day to check that out. It's usually posted either early in the morning or mid afternoon uh, when I can get to it. And I do actually wear the scent of the day. So that's what made this kind of hard. Even though I, I wear the scent of the day, there are still fragrances that sometimes I fudge, you know, and I'll not wear the scent of the day, but I'll grab something else because I'm kind of in the mood for this fragrance or that fragrance. So I put together my top five fragrances that I've reached for most in this 2020 and we only have what three or four months left in this year this is pretty much a composite or a culmination of the five fragrances that i use most now i'm a pretty simple guy i'm a pretty simple linear type of person and the fragrances that i tend to lean towards or have a predilection for are also relatively simple but they do what they do really well and you'll notice a pattern as I go through these fragrances today so the very first fragrance and I'm gonna do it in the top five starting with five and going down to my number one coming in at number five is a Salvatore Ferragamo fragrance it is known as Womo signature and yes it was shipped with this little thing here and yes I'm keeping it it protects it and something were to fall on top of it it wouldn't waste a spray so Womo signature is a very it's not a summertime fragrance per se however again and I've mentioned it multiple times I'll keep mentioning it in this strange and crazy time that we live in a lot of people are having to work from home using a computer and so you find yourself stuck inside all day and not necessarily around your teammates or workmates or peers as you normally would be whether you go into an office setting environment or a call center environment whatever the case may be my wife is a school teacher and she's now working from home I'm working from home hopefully in the near future in terms of YouTube obviously I'm sitting there by myself in front of a computer and I'm rocking this out this fragrance was created by Alberto Moria and it is a very deep dark rich wonderful fragrance that's pretty much specifically for cooler weather the reason this is for cooler weather is it is a gourmand fragrance so it's gonna be very sweet now that that sweetness luckily in this case it goes away for the most part there's a little bit left in the dry down you'll notice too about this list that they're all within the last four or five years so I try to keep everything current as possible in the top you've got Italian Mandarin you've got pink pepper with heart notes of cedar green cardamom and cinnamon resting on a base of patchouli leather coffee and tonka bean so it becomes pretty obvious when you think about the notes in signature so you've got that nice kind of rich dark coffee flavor and then you've got tonka bean and cardamom which is creating a very sweet creamy richness to this as well and you got that slightly rough but deep and luxurious leather note with a little bit of citrus and then that pink pepper helps it lift off the skin the projection on this is really really good for the first three hours the longevity of this is also really really good it is an eau de parfum concentration so not saying that that always equates to longevity but in this case it really does this fragrance lasts for a good 10 12 hours on my skin this will get you compliments gourmand fragrances always do whether you're male or female everyone loves gourmand fragrances that sweetness that deep dark richness it always reminds us of food or edibles but this one here is a very very manly scent in the dry down it's a great nighttime scent as well which is why Salvatore Ferragamo's Womo signature makes my number five taking care of my floral needs and coming in at number four is a fragrance that is fantastic if you like white floral note 
of Neroli, and that is Alfred Dunhill's Icon. Icon is a wonderful, it's also an Eau de Parfum concentration, but it's a wonderful aromatic scent that is so rich with that wonderful bright Neroli, but I love the fact that it's also combined or juxtaposed with a slightly smoky or dirty scent as well. So Perfumist Carlos Benayam, or Benayam, if I'm saying that right, is the creator of Icon. You've got top notes of Italian bergamot, Neroli Absolute, you've got petted grain, and of course, black pepper. Heart notes of cardamom, provincial lavender, juniper berry, and sage. Base notes of iris, oud, vetiver, leather, and oak moss. That's quite a lot of rich notes, a lot of essential oils gathered together. So you can see why. So you've got that bright neroli, right? Neroli, similar to juniper berry, is extremely bracing, lightly medicinal or antiseptic. And by that, I mean it like it fills your olfactive sense. Like as soon as you smell neroli, you're like, it's unmistakable. And then you add that oak moss and that oud and that patchouli for a little bit of a darker, dirty feel to it. And it's a fantastic juxtaposition of a fragrance. Icon is amazing. This is one of those feel-good fragrances similar to Womo Signature. You can't help but to feel good when you spray it on. It's perfect for that bright summer sun. It's one of those that maintains its sweetness throughout your day. This is another banger. It lasts a good 10-12 hours on your skin. Projects very, very well. It's a people pleaser, crowd pleaser, and that's why Dunhill Icon EDP comes in at my number four spot. Coming in at my number three spot was created by perfumist Dominique Ropion. It is from YSL or Issey Laurent, and it is Y Eau de Parfum. So you're sensing a pattern here. Yes, the last two or three fragrances have been Eau de Parfum concentrations. It's not on purpose. If something is deep, dark, rich, and lasts for a long time, it's awesome in my book. And YSL's Y Eau de Parfum is just that. It has that Y DNA that's very bright, very energetic, very youthful, but it also is hyper versatile. There's not a time of day or night, really, that you can't wear this. Good for all occasions. This can wear a top hat and cane just as easily as it can wear a t-shirt and jeans. So you can dress it up, dress it down. You have a top trifecta of bergamot, ginger, and apple giving it a fantastic bright citrusy open that is unmistakable. Heart notes of sage, juniper berry, and geranium absolute, resting on a base of amberwood, frankincense, and tonka bean. The amberwood and the tonka bean, of course, giving it that sweetness that you love, and of course the citrus in the open, in the, in the top there. And then of course frankincense, giving it a little bit of deep, dark, rich intensity that is what makes this stay on your skin as well as it does. Hyper versatile, perfect for any occasion, any circumstance, smells amazing. And this is one of those, it's also a feel good fragrance, but it gives you a, an amount of energy. It's almost like drinking Monster Energy or a Red Bull or something like that. At least to me, mentally, when I spray this on, I feel like I'm just outfitted and ready. This is almost like the last button on your shirt, the last cinch in your belt. It just, it feels like completeness. Like, I don't feel like I'm complete and ready to go until I spray this on. It's just one of those fragrances that will always be in my rotation and classic and in easy reach. And that's why YSL's Y Eau de Parfum comes in at my number three spot. Coming in at my number two spot is a creation from perfumist Daniela Andrie. And it is from the Prada line of fragrances and it's Prada Lunarasa Carbon came out a couple of years ago, I think 2017, and since has been an amazing creation. Now, a lot of people compare this to Dior Sauvage, and it does kind of have a Sauvage feel about it. I, I admit it's, it's very similar, but to me, the biggest difference is in the dry down. When this dries down, it's a totally different creature than Dior Sauvage, and I will actually take this over Dior Sauvage. It has, to me, more personality. It's got a little bit more complexity. First of all, it's not as loud as Dior Sauvage is. I guess I'm referencing the Eau de Toilette Dior Sauvage, not the EDP, which isn't quite as loud. The Eau de Toilette to me is, is louder than the EDP Sauvage. Anyway, this is not quite as loud as the EDT Sauvage, and to me it's more pleasing in a constricted location where people are in close proximity to you. So it's going to be more pleasing to those around you. It's also very pleasing to 
the nose of the wearer. Italian bergamot zest, you've got pepper, lavender, patchouli, ambroxan. You've also got certain, like, like the name implies, you've got ozonic notes, you've got uh, mineralic notes like coal. It's a little bit dusty in your nose, like the name implies. And that's what the difference is in the dry down from Sauvage. The Ambroxan, of course, makes people think of Sauvage and other quick, easy grabs. But the difference is this one is a little bit complex. To me, a lot richer in the dry down and eminently wearable. Fantastic fragrance, and that's why Prada Lunarasa Carbon comes in at my number two spot. Coming in at my number one spot, my number one fragrance that I have grabbed for most in 2020 kind of surprised me, probably will surprise you. It's a fragrance that came out a long time ago, and when this new updated version was released, people thought that it was referencing the old fragrance, when in fact it was just inspired by, and it's a new all its own, and that is Kinzo Am Eau de Parfum. So yes, all of these in my list of five have been EDPs, Eau de Parfum, one was an EDT, that is Prada, Lunarasa Carbon was the only Eau de Toilette. So I do like that deeper, darker, richer, longer lasting, usually, combination. To me, killer combination. It was really an unconscious thing grabbing for this fragrance as often as I have. But one thing that I absolutely love about it is when I first spray it on, it really reminds me of my favorite drink when I was a kid, and that was grape knee high. So there's no grape in this. Now there is a candied, kind of a candied essence about this that's due largely to the combination of mint and the fruits that are used in this, and some likely aroma chemicals as well. But that first blast, that first initial blast, and for the first 20 to 30 minutes afterwards, it reminds me of, of grape knee high. Now, this was supposedly inspired by the deep blue sea and has like these aquatic notes in here that I don't really detect. Just gonna be honest with you, there's no ocean in Kenzo Am. If you're looking for ocean, you best go to more like an aqua or an aquatic, like Chrome Aqua or Aqua Amara or Bulgari Aqua Atlantique, something like that. It's gonna be more oceanic or aquatic than this fragrance. Some people make a light comparison of Kenzo Am EDP to fragrances such as Versace Eros Flame and Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mal Eau Fraiche, and they happen to have the same perfumes, so it makes sense that it would smell similar to this. This actually has been compared to Invictus, and I will admit it's very Invictus-y in the open and a little bit in the mid, but where it differs largely divergent is in the dry down. I'm just gonna warn you, it's gonna seem like this is a skin scent because you don't detect it, but trust me, it's on you. Other people will smell it and will let you know. This is a compliment puller. It is a very consistent compliment puller. It's so bright, it's, so, so it's such a fruity burst and a sweet burst in the open that it's easy to go anosmic very quickly. Natalie Graciacetto and Olivier Pachou combined their efforts to create this wonder. In the top, you've got cardamom, you've got mint, you've got citruses. Sea notes, spice, and sage comprise the mid-heart with a base of vetiver, vanilla, cedar, and sandalwood. A lot of fruitiness. Uh, that, again, that kind of reminds me of that grape knee-high. Now, I've got that memory hook in my head. When you smell this, you might not smell grape knee-high at all. You'll smell something different. But that's the wonderful thing about fragrances. They hearken different reactions, different thoughts, and smells in different people because of how they ping our cerebral amygdala and our memory. Now that, that kind of candied essence in this stays all the way through the life of the fragrance, but it kind of takes a background and coming to the forefront a little bit more are the, the creamy base of vanilla and sandalwood working together. Favorite grab of 2020, so far anyway, Kenzo Um EDP. Now again, Going back to the Eau de Toilette version of this, the original version of this, which was created many years ago, like in the early to mid 90s, this is not at all like that. So you'll be vastly disappointed if you get this thinking, it's gonna remind you of the old version. It's, a, it's its own new thing. Again, it was just inspired by the old version, but there's not really any of the essence of the DNA in the Eau de Parfum. All right, guys, that's it for my top five grabs, at least so far in this year of 2020. We have a few months left. By the end of the year, I'll definitely do an updated version of this and see how it differs from my current top five. 
Thanks so much for stopping by and checking out my video today. As always, thank you so much for your support of my channel. It means the world to me. I'm Tommy with Studio Sense, and I'll see you next time.